Hello everybody, Steffi here from The Makers. Welcome to the long-awaited live stream for our little witch and um, we've got a name for her, she's called Witch Amethyst, uh, courtesy of uh, one of our lovely customers who named her on Saturday as part of a competition. Um, some of you may have been around um, to see that. I'm sorry, I just noticed I've got a wonky sign, that can't, can't be. Right, it's, I don't it's hear been, you. oh dear. Okay, um, well, Alicia is um, at the other end. However, Alicia is um, not in my ear yet. So she's coming out of um, the loudspeaker. So do apologize. That's always a little blooper. Okay, so hopefully um, everybody can hear me now. Uh, let's have a look. Yes, I should audio and everything's on. Um, you sh we should all be fine. Right. Um, so, yes. Amethyst the Witch is what we're doing today. You might have got our little um, witch needle felt pack, which looks like this, and that's what I'm going to be using. Um, and that has got everything in it to make the witch hat and broomstick included. It doesn't have any tools though, so if you still want to buy it, you can uh, go ahead and um, and hop onto our website to get it. And um, today is the 21st of September, 2021. This live stream on um, on YouTube will be repeated on Facebook at 7 p.m. on the 23rd of um, November. And we have got a prize giveaway today as well. And today's prize is this. Win yourself the Emerald Fairy Kit and by telling us a fun felting magic spell. So basically it's a magic spell that has to have something to do with felting and it's also meant to be funny. That's, that's basically it. So... Comment on the on the um, on the video on the live stream that you're watching here today, either on the 21st of September at 1 p.m. on YouTube or on the 23rd of September, which is Thursday at 7 p.m. over on on um, Facebook. And um, towards the end of the live stream, um, Alicia will uh, draw a winner. She, it, it might also be Alicia on Thursday. I need to check that with Hannah first. But um, in any case, we will have two winners, one here today on Tuesday and one on Thursday. And I will announce the Tuesday winner because I can't look into the future for Thursday. Uh, it will have to be just all online in terms of comments. Let's have a look who's here today. Um, we have got um, Awkward Prawn is here. Hello, Awkward Prawn. Sandra is there. Gina. Um, oh, from a hot and sunny Lincolnshire. It's actually not too bad here in Gloucestershire today. Um, Donna is there. Hello, Donna. Uh, Melanie, uh, Meg, Carol, all the way from Ireland. Alison, um, Jane, um, Bridget, from the other side of the world. Uh, Catherine, uh, C. Choi, another Catherine, Helen. Serena. Okay, quite a few people watching here today because you all love the witch. Now, before I start, I left my um, Earth Friendly Felting mat dirty for you so that you could actually see what I, how I can clean it up. And, and um, I'm just going to go overhead. Oh, that camera might be a bit out of... Um, oh, it's not too bad. Let's get this sorted. I just knocked it with my head a minute ago. I... Right, here we go. See all these fluffy fibers? This is from when I needle felted leaves and acorns at the weekend. And now I've got my um, brush mat. This has got some really stiff rubber, rubber sheets there. And you can literally sweep up these fibers by just running your brush across it. And it's picking up all the dark fibers can do it from both sides if you um, and you can see you can sort of get a lot of it off there and then you obviously do this a couple more times it's never going to be totally white again so you know don't live in that um, illusion and the more often you clean it the more you can maintain its um, its light look but that's not bad right so and it's been felted together by doing this as well. So it's been attached, it has attached itself to the base mat, which is fine. You can just, um, you know, just un unattach it, disattach it, um, unattach it, disattach it, whichever one. You know what I'm talking about. And um, and so that's quite quite useful to have these uh, brush 
brushes. You uh, don't get a choice for a color. We just pick one for you and it might be blue or it might be um, like a red version. I can't, re I can't remember what other colors we have got, but it doesn't really matter too much. Um, if you've got an aversion to a particular color, then we might be able to jiggle something for you. So that's uh, basically just the, the uh, brush in action, cleaning the um, earth-friendly felting mat. All right, let's have a look what's inside the witch pack. So the little witch, um, there you go, that, that's how it's come. You obviously get your instructions, so you're not relying on a live stream. And there are, as always, our step-by-step -step color instructions with our tape measure here on the left so that um, you can measure against that because we work in inches. Um, no, we work in centimeters, but you might work in inches. And um, there you go. Everything's in there. Get our needle felting. Um, it's just a little bit about needle felting there. And then you have got a broom <clears throat> here for her, ready for her to... Um, ride on and fly away and a little hat which you can straighten out by just um, um, putting your finger inside and making it straight or maybe you like the crumpled look then she can wear it like this as well and then you've got um, all these lush colors in there I love these two uh, together that um, golden orange and our neon green and then of course some amazing purple locks which ha locks which has given her the name amethyst you get some black for her skirt and some flesh pink for her arms and her face. And um, and then you also get our favorite wire in there, which is the flexible steel wire. You need two of those. So I'm going to show you now how to um, make this from beginning to end. If you're crafting along, I'll try and um, stop so that you can catch up if you if you're not quite um, with me and um, if if you're just watching it for the fun of it then just sit back and enjoy and get a cuppa going and uh, relax. Right so first of all you take one of your flexible steel wires and cut off a 12 centimeter length and um, so I'm going to put the other one out of the way altogether. Don't look I'm using my scissors which I often do. Um, I'm just measuring it against here against my cutting board. 12 centimeters that's 12 centimeters um, and um, at one end of this wrap a wispy strand of flesh pink but surround it for about one centimeter keeping the wool flat like a ribbon. So what I'm doing first is the head. Now um, you've got your lovely pink wool here, take a strand off and even, even if it looks clumpy you can tease it apart still so make sure that you've got nice a nice thin um, strand here that you can use. Wrap it around the end for about one centimeter. Keep it nice and tight. As with anything wool wrapping around the wire, you have to keep it nice and taut. And then when you've covered about one centimeter, all you're doing is bending this in by about half to one centimeter. There you go. Can you see that? And then you go over that bent again. And now you can start building up um, a larger bulk for the head. Now what I do is, um, because you're going to make the head um, first and that is going to be about three centimeters in diameter. So um, the di di diameter is from here to here or from the side to side so it's completely round and what I'll do is I'm holding my fingers on the wire no more than three centimeters along so that I don't allow the wool to slip down this wire and so I'm, um, I'm, I'm stopping the wool to slip by having my fingers right at the top of the head so that it doesn't, it doesn't go any further. Because what you don't want is you don't want to have like a long sausage on the end of your wire. So you're ro rolling the wool round, winding the wool round, keeping it nice and flat like a ribbon. If you have to start at a new end, then remember which way round you wound it. So make sure it's always going round the same way. And when it gets to a point where you're finding it hard to make the wool stay on there, that is when you're going to start needle felting um, the wool down. You can see here, I hasn't slipped down because I've had my finger there to stop it. So it looks a bit square down there, but you can just um, felt that um, flat now. And so I'm using my felting needle to go into the base. Now, um, I've just picked up a coarse felting needle, which is actually too coarse for this soft Australian flesh pink 
um, merino wool. It is, um, we have also got this version in, in as a New Zealand merino, which is a bit coarser. I love this uh, flesh pink in Australian merino because it's so much nicer to felt down, especially when you're making um, heads or faces or if you're doing delicate, smooth features on, say, fairies and even on little witches, if you like. So you felt this down um, as best as you can. I've actually got a bent needle. I've already stabbed myself twice this morning. I'll tell you in a minute why. Um, well, obviously I was needle felting, but I'll tell you in a minute what I was needle felting. And I'm felting this wool down, trying to maintain that round shape. When you felt so close to the wire, you have to watch the wire does it, that you don't stab the needle into it. And when you felt it down after you've wound the wool around it, you might find that the ball that you thought was already the right size is actually too small and you've got to add more wool. So that might be the case. We'll just check it out in a minute. The hat is quite big for our little witch, but with the hair on it, we, we will have much a much larger surface um, later once the hair is on it and then the hat will fit perfectly. Right, so there's a little head shape coming along. I'm just gonna measure that. It's actually one centimeter too small still, so I'm gonna take some more of the wool and build a little bit more bulk on there. So you do this until you've got the desired size um, and shape, obviously, of a round head for our witch. There we go. I've actually been suffering from a cold recently, and I don't know about any of you, but it is almost, it's almost against the law now to sneeze, but beware you if you need to cough. <laughs> it's like, I'm like, I've come up with all kinds of... Um, with all kinds of um now what did somebody say the other day um you used to you used to cough to cover up a fart and now you fart to cover up a cough <laughs> which I thought was very funny <laughs> not that I've done that but it feels a little bit like this don't cough whatever may happen or you're gonna get I don't know locked up or something so um yes I definitely have only had a cold I still do know what colds are like and I also did lateral flow tests constantly because I've got children in the household as well and they go to school and they have to do these tests and um, it is just a good old cold and in many ways I know that sounds really weird I was actually really pleased to get a cold because I've been so completely um, unaffected by any bugs or viruses or anything like this I've been I, I want to say I've been super healthy I haven't felt super healthy because I've also felt tired and you know at times a little bit blue with everything that's been going on but I I've, I've had absolutely nothing no bugs no nothing and um and to and then I, I I worry because we do need these colds and we need the coughs and the and whatnot. We do need them to build our immunity. Um, and um, we don't always want to be completely super healthy. We need to be exposed to the benign, um, more benign illnesses, so that we can we can build a strong immune system. And especially when you've got children, you always have them floating around in your house, and you get something all the time, or you get like a like a little bit of it so yeah I was actually in many ways I thought oh this is quite good to have a cold um my immune system has been called into action so there you go um right I think that's the right size now three centimeters I will double check it's not that much fun uh, needle felting with a bent needle I will be honest so I'm going to change that in a minute and there you go there's the three centimeters now yeah, bang on. Right. I'm just going to go to the large camera and show you that. I'm holding that up as well. Like a little balloon, our little witch's head there. And I'm just going to have a little look what um, funny spells we're getting here at the moment. Um, um, oh, Awkward Prawn has to leave because she's going for a nice beach walk. Well, that's all right for some. Hi, everyone. Oh, no, we've, I've done all of that. Um, uh, Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, Catherine says she's had sunbathing squirrels in her garden. I've never seen squirrels sunbathe. I've seen chickens sunbathe. Well, how, how do they sunbathe? Do they literally lie down like this with sunglasses on and a pina colada? <coughs> oh dear, I coughed. 
Um, oh, we've got Gabriella from the Czech Republic. Oh, hello. We've not, uh, as far as I know, we've not had anybody watch from the Czech um, Republic. So that's nice. Um, fluff, fluff, grow, grow. Always need more in my stash magic spell. That was the magic spell, but I was I, I thought it would rhyme, so I was waiting for the rhyme. But that that is a good fluff. Uh, that's a good magic spell because that's what we all want. Um. Oh, Diane is there. Tell us your fun felting spell. That's it. That's what Alicia's shouting out. Um. Uh, Marion says I'm here lying down as I've just had my second COVID vaccination in hospital because of previous reactions. Feeling a bit lightheaded, but okay. Oh, we'll cheer you up, Marion. Don't worry. Just um. Yeah. Just just stay, hang in there. You'll be fine. Um, Vampire Venom says, light a white candle and surround with clear quartz. Chant, let this project felt to perfection. That is my wish. So mote it be. Snuff the candle, never blow out. Breathe deep and felt away. Ooh, that's such a nice poetic um, spell. Um, are the witch chats available separately? Not right now, but they probably will be when we don't produce the witch pack anymore. Um, um, what else? Sorry. Um, Diana, goddess of the moon, shine your light on my craft. Gaia, mother of the earth, bless these woolen fibers for my felting. Venus Aphrodite, grant love upon me for my creation. Vampire Venom, you're obviously really into this. Is anybody else going to say anything? The needle felting fairy keeps keep keeps using her magic spells and parcels keep arriving with more fluff. I keep telling my partner I didn't know how that happened. Well, it's just a little witch. Um, light a fire, bubble up your cauldron, sprinkle in glitter, then throw in and boil up all those felting disasters that we hold stuff in the bottom of a bag <laughs> only you never know what may come out oh i love it hocus pocus keep your focus so you don't stop your fingers while felting good good move uh, donna i love that one um hubble bubble toil and felt make my witch but don't let it melt useless at poems oh bless you that was brilliant susan thank you for that magic fairy spell keeps delivering fluffy parcels <laughs> um Oh, yeah, this is it. You, Susan didn't have a, hasn't had a cold for 18 months. I was the same. And so I was actually really pleased when I got one. It's like, I never thought I'd want a cold, but I thought, yeah, great. My immune system is still working. It's all good. Um, anyway, let's move on. Uh, oh, Jane says she has a confession to make, to make. She's already made her little witch. Um, she couldn't, she couldn't wait, but she did add wings. I like it. I will tell you something at the risk of upsetting some people. But last year when we did the the bigger witch, um, we actually had a um, we had a very concerning message. Let's put it this way: um, asking us not to tempt fate by making a witch as if we're not um, cursed already enough, and God wouldn't be very happy with us making witches. I just leave that there with you, okay? We went ahead and did our witch, and the world is still here. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, right. Let's move on to the next thing. Um, we're going to the arms now. So the, from your second wire, cut off a 30 centimeter length. So this is the one that I haven't used yet. And I am going to use my scissors because my pliers are at the other end of the room. Ha. <laughs> 30 centimeters of the wire, which you can't see very well. And now I'm going to go to the overhead camera again and I'm going to use the pink again. Now this time I'm going to use it really, 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 really sparingly. And I give you a tr tip trick as well. If you're trying to wrap the end of the wire with um, with wool and you really want it to be really ever so, so thin, just insert it into your nozzle of the glue done anything there so you have a really thin layer of glue on that one and then you can tease the wool out get the wool to stick just so that you have a, a nice grip and then wrap the wool around it and you're going to wrap the wool along that wire um, for about eight centimeters now I'm turning this round because I find it easier to twist the wire to keep the wool really tight for eight 
centimeters. It's quite a long length. I'm going to measure that against just one more centimeter. <clears throat> and then make sure that the end of that is the end of the wool is like really, really wound tightly around the, um, the wire. So I've got my eight centimeter length here. And now I'm going to bend the wire in five centimeter from the end. So from here to there, five centimeters, that's about there. And then bend the wire back on itself at five, milli five millimeters, so half a centimeter. So you've got, you've gone up, you've gone down and up again. And then you're going to um, come back on itself again. So if any of you have made the pumpkin fairy, this is the hand that you would have made on, on her. And then you come back on yourself and that will make a little fist. So you've got your thumb there and then you've got your hand there. And, um, and then you're going to twist the remainder of the pipe of the wire around the wrist. So you've got a bit of a jumbled up wrist there for now. Can you see? And now I'm going to use the wool to cover it all up. So I start at the wrist because I need to get rid of that twisted wire look. And then I need to fill in the, the hand as well. So it's really important you use very thin wool to do this. Leave the, um, leave the gap between the hand and the thumb so that the wire is, is not completely closed up because that will help you to um, felt the hand down a little bit. And then you work your way along the arm further up the arm until you get almost to the middle but we need to do the other side as well so I'm just going to finish this one off now and I'll show you all of this again on the other side. There will be some wool covered over the top of the arm so we're going to use the golden yellow for that so eight centimeters that's how how long I'm covering it how far with, um, oh yeah, stick stick it in the glue bottle. There. <clears throat> Start at this end this time, getting gluey fingers now, but hey ho. Wrap it around the wire, keep it nice and thin. Keep teasing the wool. If you if you think, oh, this is getting too fat, you, you're in control of this. You can keep teasing the wool out. Just pull it tight. With every wrap, I give it a little tuck to pull it tight. Go up that eight centimeters. And then I'm going to get rid of the rest of the wool. Make sure that wool is really tightly wrapped around the end here. muted okay sorry sorry about this guys um sorry about the little interlude my my computer has done this before um in that it just decides to just take a little break and disappears and uh, i just have to sit very quietly and wait for it to come back up on again um so anyway here we go again you you've got me full full picture and sound and i've actually um continued on the second hand while i was um sitting here literally twiddling my thumbs so i'm going to show you this is the first hand that i made that we made together there and now i've made the second one i'm just about to wrap the arm up and um i'm going to just continue with that as as is wrap towards the middle and I'm not so worried about the wool unwinding itself here a little bit because, um, because as I said, we are going to add more of the golden orange on top. And what you can do is if the, if the hands here, if they're not um, as neat as you want them to be, then you can just use your fine needle and felt into the hand in between the wires to felt down any wispy bits. 
um, very gently. It's best to use a fine needle for this and then do this on the other side as well. There we go. A lot of the hand uh, uh, will be sort of like, because we have to glue the hands to the broom later, which um, you won't be able to see it drying because it will take a little while. But um, don't worry about the bits here at the end unwinding itself, because now what we're going to do is we're going to take the head that we've made and we're going to wrap the arms around it. Um, So take your head shape and twist the arms around the main wire under where the head is attached. Push the arms up. So if you if you wrap them more down here, you can push them up and um, so that they're positioned right underneath the head. Then use pliers to tighten the twist. Okay, I haven't got pliers to tighten the twist. I'm just going to give it another wrap. That will make it nice and tight. And now um, to further secure the arms, wrap a thin layer of the golden orange. This is this uh, lovely wool that oh, I just love it. It's such a nice Halloween... Um, autumn, harvest, all of that, all of those colors um, wool. Now the arms look really long out of proportion, but because the little witch is, uh, I just show you here on the front camera. So the little witch has got long arms because she's got to hold onto the broom. So they are, they look slightly longer, but they need to be longer. Otherwise it looks like she's like holding onto the broom like this rather than majestically riding her broom. That is why they are slightly longer. And now you're going to um, use this um, golden orange wool to wrap around the join of where you attach the arms just so that they stop wriggling around. So you're just going um, like in a crossway over and around a couple of times. And that's just to fasten the arms on for now. And now we're going to make the legs. So, so you have got um, um, the remainder of the first wire. You know when we cut when we you know when we cut twelve centimeters. You have got you've got um, you've still got the remainder here. The wire is forty five centimeters, so you have plenty of on there to cut eighteen centimeters off. So I'm going to do that. Eighteen centimeters. I'm going to put all of this just out of the way and all I'm going to do now is I am going to um, cover this with a thin layer of the neon green bats and this time I'm leaving one centimeter of the wire exposed and the reason for that is that we're not we're making the feet out of a different out of a different color so I'm literally just um, again you could uh, submerge this in into the glue bottle or just stick it into the glue bottle for a minute so all I'm doing is I'm just wrapping this green wool around the um, around the whole of the pipe on uh, not pipe cleaner wire. Um, always remember which way which way round you started, and this time I'm not leaving a gap in the middle. I'm going all the way across to the other side because that's how we make the legs. There's no gap in the middle. Just go all the way across. So remember, I'm always I've always started from this side. So now I'm literally always turning my whole work around again and going um, across that way. So I remember I'm starting from that direction. So always remember which way you started. Establishing my wool first, turning this round because it's easier to twist the wire around the wool rather than going over and over over the wool, all the way across, leaving one centimeter exposed. Oh, got stuck on my felting mat. I can go back on myself because you need to build up a, um, a decent um, size of legs, um, which is about um, how, um, it's about um, half a centimeter thick, the legs. So you just need to make sure that your legs are nice and thick. And uh, starting at this end, just building up a little bit here. And once I've done this, I am going to make the feet of the little witch. And for that, all I need to do is, oh, there's a little bit of a dent there. Let's wrap that. That was probably there. 
I've just started from the wrong end. I can feel that it's unwinding itself underneath, but it's right in the middle. So I'm just going to give that a little stab to stop it from unwinding itself. It's hard to remember which end you started. So make sure you're going in the same direction. Oh, I love this green so much. It's amazing. Right. So now I've got my um, my legs here with a little bit of wire exposed at either end. And now I'm going to take a small strand of this um, black wool, which is the uh, black merino, um, the wool tops you've got in here. And you're going to, um, you take a wisp of the jet black tops and wrap one end of the um, leg wire for about one centimeter. So just wrap that for about one centimeter, then bend the end in at 0.5 centimeters, so half a centimeter. So exactly what we've done for the hands and for the head, for that matter. And then you keep going over the rest of it with a black still. And um, you can actually, and this is what you're doing, you're allowing the wool to slip off the, the end a little bit because that's going to make the pointy um, foot shape. So allow it to slip off a bit. If it's slipping off too, mu too much, then just unwind your wool again. There. So my wire stops here and all of this is loose. So I'm making like a pointy, a pointy shoe, if you like, or sock. And I'm gonna felt this down now into an, a point. this and that that's extending the foot but it's also allowing you to make a pointy end without having a pointy wire sticking out because we want to be secure we don't want any any wire sticking out so you've got you've made a little a little pointy foot um, by letting the the wool slip off um, the end of the wire you can also felt into the foot to secure it a bit better just keep turning your work round and um, and so that's one one end there turning the pages now and um, and then you need to go up the leg to make the candy stripe feature that you've got on the leg so take a tiny tiny amount if you'd had enough left you could have used that just going over the foot again to neaten that up a little bit and now I'm going to go up the leg but this time I want it to be so that it's stripy. So I'm literally just letting the wool make the pattern here until it goes all the way there. I can felt that down a bit, stop it from unwinding. Oh, this needle is getting more and more bent, but it's already, it's already bent. It's just, and now we're going to do the same again on the other side. So take a bit of the black wool Wrap the end, about one centimeter. Then bend the pipe cleaner, uh, bend the wire in so that you trap the wool. Continue wrapping the foot with the wool, but allow the wool to slip off like this. Then you can felt this down. So you have a pointy end here, felt this down. This time I have got um, more wool here still left that will probably go up the leg for the candy stripe pattern. It's like licorice almost, isn't it? Like licorice, neon licorice. Don't know what that might be. There. So, and then you allow the rest of the wool to make that candy stripe pattern. So that goes up the leg like this. And I felt that in here at the top just so that it doesn't come loose. That's the part that you won't see later. And you can felt the foot down a little bit more to make sure you've got the right shape. And so at the moment you've got um, you've got her so with her feet straight out, which is exactly the position she will in because she's flying on her broom and so she's got her legs at the back. But you've now got two pointy feet at either end and um, and all you need to do now is you're going to take your body with a humongous long arms and you measure 
you can do this by eye or you can measure it. So we know the head is three centimeters from here to there, and you need that three centimeters here again, and that is where you're gonna fasten the um, legs in. Just gonna bend the arms out of the way. So put the legs into the position, make sure it's in the middle, and then you go round the legs a couple of times so that you secure the legs onto the main body and then get rid of the rest of the wire around her body. You can then bend the legs down. And so now you have got your little very skinny witch here. And all you're going to do now is you're going to start building the body up. I'm just going to have a quick check in with everybody what's happening. Um, because we've got lots of um, fun spells coming in. Um, abracadabra, abracadabra, huff, puff, puff, make me a basket of woolly stuff. Nice one. I like that. Um, Oh, Pamela Miller is in the house. She's all the way from Oregon. Yes, thumbs up, everybody. Give us the thumbs up on the video. And um, what, I'm, what I wanted to tell you earlier is I've been working on a spring project. <laughs> I know, I know. We haven't even had Christmas yet and I'm working on a spring project. Working on workshop proposals for March. And um, I have got a little, a little, um, little, a little one here. What do you think to him? So he's like, um, he's a poseable bunny. He's got poseable arms and ears. Um, and he has got poseable legs as well. And he stands on his legs and he's using his carrot as a walking stick. Let me know if you like this. Let me know if you like this because I, I've, I've sent it off as a proposal and I think it's going to be a nice um, spring workshop. He's got a, a little blue tail. Um, and a little waistcoat. He's wearing a little waistcoat. There you go. What do you think? I'd be interested to hear your views on this one. Right. Um, that was just a little completely unseasonal interruption. And um, we're going back to the witch. Um, yes, let's go back to the witch. Okay, so building up the body with this lovely orange, which is matches the orange ribbon on her hat um, very well. Oh, sorry, got another witch flying into the picture here. Um, and all you need to do with this one is you're going to build up more of the body. It doesn't really matter which way round you do this now, whether you start on, on the actual body and go round the legs to secure the legs more. Um, just get bulk built up so that um, she's not so skinny anymore and she's got a bit of a, a body shape there. And then, of course, as I said earlier, you're going to give her um, covered upper arms as well. So all this stuff that looks really messy here now is going to be nice and tidy. Um, do this and then felt it down and then add some more. Give her some um, orange pants and just stab it down. You've got plenty of orange there to give her, even if even if you want to give her some um, sort of long underpants, it's getting cold now, especially when you fly through the air. And then cover the top of the arms, so tidy that part of the um, arms up. You can build a little bit more bulk there as well. And it's just a question of like literally working your way around the body and, and not minding too much that some of parts don't look finished yet because you haven't got round to getting them done yet. And going back. And then felt it down. Yeah. And then going to build up a little bit more. Like I say, you've got plenty of orange there to now give her um, um, a bit of a bulk around the body. In fact, you probably have got orange left over. I'd be very surprised if you use it all. Seems quite um, a generous amount in there. You've, even, you've still got green left over, so you can add it to your stash for another time. Get Give her a bit more of a bum here legs. I really love that um, that orange. It's just so, um, I don't know, it's just such a lovely variegated color. It's definitely one of my favorite colors. I'm not, I'm not a particular orange person, but I do like this color. It's um, 
it's literally the color of orange of um, carrot soup <laughs> that's what i think <laughs> you know when it's all mixed up and it's slightly variegated there you go got a witch there now um wanting her everything else that she hasn't got yet and so what you're doing next is you're going to give her her um her cloak or her dress if you like and um what you do here is that is that you um you split off a short strand of jet black tops lay this onto the back of the witch and separate the upper end of the strand in half so the wool can be folded over each shoulder a bit like a cape and then um you felt so you you basically have to split this so whatever you've got left over, split it. It's a bit sticking out. Let's get rid of that. And um, you've got to decide now what's the front and what's the back. And I'm going to split this in half. So you've got like, like a snail's tongue there. Not a snail's tongue, a snake's tongue. And um, decide what's the front and what's the back. There's not much difference, really. But you lay this on and fold these two ends over her top. So it's like a... It's, it's like... Um, like a cape basically and fold that down like that and then felt these two bits that you folded over the shoulders down just so that it fastens it on that's the front and then you're going to do the same here at the back you're felting it down basically felt the upper part of the wool down <clears throat> there we go and then oh it's got black in her on the back of her head so that's the front that's the back and now you want you want to repeat the same thing, but this time you're, you're just doing it from the front. So eventually, um, basically, the front looks neater than the back. That's why we've done it that way around. So you are folding these over her shoulders from the front this time, around the back. Make sure you don't get black fibers onto her face, and then felt this down in exactly the same way. It's just to secure it. It's just so that you can it doesn't come off. And then do the same here at the front. So you've given her um, a dress, almost a little bit like a pinafore type dress. But you can't see those uh, split ends anymore because they are now part of, um, part of the whole dress. There you go. And then you're going to use some of your bright um, neon green. And you're going to felt that around her waist. So bend the arms out of the way and wrap this around her waist a couple of times. You can make that thicker or thinner, however you like it. And then just felt it into place, stabbing into it. Remember, you might hit the wire inside, so just be mindful. My needles already bent. So it um, you can't unbend needles, by the way. They are quite, um, they're quite inflexible. They're made from steel, so you, it's not like it's a flexible um, metal. Felt it down all around. So now she has got, she's got her, her, um, her dress on, and um, and then you're gonna trim her dress, so that you, because we want to see her amazing candy stripe legs. So for this, you are going to use scissors. Snippety snip, and snippety snip so now she's got a short a short skirt on and you can um sort of pull the fibers around the sides a little bit so that you've got um they're they're all all neat underneath and you can now if you want to add little um facial features some people don't like adding eyes or anything like that so take your fairy not fairy there's actually a spelling mistake in the instructions it me mentions fairies because we've got fairies on our brains We're making fairies all the time it's going to get her top felted down a little bit just making her a little bit neater i actually can't remember now what the front and the back is but i don't think it matters uh i think that that is the front okay 
So where's that little black wisp gone now? I don't know, I had a little black wisp. Oh, there. There it is. Take a tiny, tiny little black wisp and roll this into a tiny little ball and then felt that in for her eyes. So she has little black eyes. So this is from the off cuts of your, of your skirt, if you like. Do this on the other side. I'm actually just using it as it is, just stabbing it in until it's small enough. And then use a tiny bit of the orange that you've used for her skirt to give her a little, a little mouth. Some people are so good at doing these features really amazingly, delicately. I'm a bit slapdash, I'll be honest. So now you've got a, um, a witch with no hair. And that's the fun bit. We want to add the hair to her now. So when you use these curls, um, there's, a, there's a lot of sort of tangled up and not so nice bits. And some of them are curly. They're quite wild. And to separate them and to put them into some sort of order, you might have to use your scissors to cut, to cut them rather than just pulling them. Um, but don't spend too much time remember the the um the witch will wear her hat as well so just get some some curls into order so that you can start attaching them i'm just laying them out here now so that i know this is sort of a bundle that i can attach to it to the side of her head and that's what i usually do is cut, um adding curls or hair to um a, a fairy or um any figure i usually start by framing the head and that that makes sure that a you've got enough to for the front of the head and um and b it sort of it works quite well to go around the head first so i'm starting with the side of the head adding the curls onto um by felting them onto the side and onto the top of the head so they hang down at the side these are very tamed the curls that i've just picked here you can be a lot more free with how much you add on there because you've got lots of curls there. And i um, very conscious that I want to get to the end of this project before the hour is up. But I will um, let you catch up in a minute because um, a lot of the rest of the stuff I can show you, but I, I won't be able to show you exactly how the finished witch will be with the broom and everything felted on because there is a bit of a trick to it I'm getting the broom to stick to her hands but I will explain that to you and show it to you so uh, do your best to tangle detangle the curls and um, use the scissors if need be if they're too messed up just just cut them if you pull them this is what happens they get completely frizzy which might be the look you want so don't um, don't be put off by that. But if you want them um, a little bit more sort of dreadlock looking like or want to see the nice curls, then do use them. Use the scissors to separate them rather than pulling them and frizzing them, put, turning them into frizz. And felt them on. I've still got lots of curls left here that I can felt on. So... What am I using next? Oh, this looks like a nice bunch. Get these on. You can make her really wild her hair. You can use all of the curls that you've got in your pack. They are really fun to use. Um, we do do these Lester curls. That's what they're called. Lester curls, they come in different colors. We have them in red, green, um, yellow, purple. I, th I think we've got them in blue, but I can't remember if we stock them currently. We used to have them in blue anyway. Um... Oh, there's a nice curl I can tease out to hang in her face. Put that up there. So work your way around it. Work with the curls that you've got. You can plan it um, a little bit, but let the curls also just do the wild thing. There you go. Oh, she looks quite nice with her wild head. Felt them on so that the curls are hanging freely off the back of her head or the side of her head or wherever. There, and you can obviously add. I've got still all of these curls to add if I wanted to, but I'm going to leave it as at at that. And then um, to um, put her hat on, you're going to have to glue it. So put it in the position you want it to be. So cute! I love these hats. 
So the hat fits here like that. I will check um, with, with our um, workshop if we've got spare hats that we can um, list and then um, hopefully sell for you to make more more witches because they are really, really good, those hats. And um, and so it, it actually doesn't fall off. Um, so, but you can glue it if you if you want to. It's got a, a, a strand of hair hanging right in her face. And then um, finally, what you need to do is you need to position the broom. So position your witch so that she's literally got her feet at the back like that. So she's like flying, Ooh, flying through the air like that. And then you just put the broom, you can separate her skirt a bit, put the broom so that she's sitting on it and uh, make sure that you've got enough of the broom handle sticking out at the front. And now the, this is the tricky bit. You're going to have to position her hands around the broom handle. And I think this is probably what people mostly have struggled with. It's just being brave to bend her into the right shape. Get her hands onto the broom handle and then you put lots and lots of um, glue um, onto there. And whilst it's drying, you need to um, wrap. So I sh I'll show you what I've done. Let's bend these arm a bit, arms a bit more, so they're more in the middle. There. She's almost holding onto it herself now, so you can do that too. But if you wanted to um, have her hands permanently fixed onto the broom, then um, just use a little bit of glue. And bend the arms in a bit as well. So it's just a question of bending her arms into the position where you want her to hold the broom handle and then gluing it on. And what I've done is once I've got um, them into in position, I've I've wrapped it with a with one of the um, leftover wire pieces so that it it stays in the right position whilst the glue is drying. Where's my glue there? So add lots of glue to the broom handle. Uh, Get the arms in a position, the hands, where you want them to be, like that. Don't worry if it looks really messy. It won't be one when it, once it's all dried. And you can still bend the arms um, in, into the right place again, like this. Then use your, you can also use an elastic band. Just use the wire and literally tie her to the broom. <laughs> This is almost witch abuse. And leave it like this now to dry. Don't worry about the arms looking all in the wrong place because you can bend them into the right place again. Don't worry that she's um, not sitting on the broom right now. Um, you can do all of that again by, um, you see, all you need to do is just bend the arms so that they're further towards the body and you can sort her dress out. Just let the hands dry onto the broom handle, which at the moment they're around the broom handle. That's all you want so that they are literally just staying there like that. And she's lost her hat and she's a bit of a, a of a messy witch now, but that's basically, um, that's basically it. Um, there you go. She will be absolutely fine once <laughs> she's tied tied to the broom handle. <laughs> this is what we do to our witches there. There, um, yeah, anyway. If you've got a magic spell for her to um, be automatically tied to the broom, then um, now is the time to use it because um, she she's literally wired to the the broom handle. <laughs> Sorry, I should have warned you that there's um that there's some cruelty to witches happening. But that's basically it, and I'm I'm I've literally rushed through this because I wanted to finish on time. But I have got lots of other things to tell you. So whilst you are um, wiring your um, hands, not your hands, don't do it to your hands or anybody else's hands for that matter, other than the witch's hands, um, to the broom handle to make sure that the glue can dry and she's in the right position. So we have now released this workshop pack. This is what we um, take to shows with us. And um, for our curly hedgehog, because we've built him in as a one of our next um, live streams. And I'm just going to show you what's coming up. Oh, it's fallen over. Um, so the next live streams are the following. So we're starting uh, next week on our Toadstool House, which is a two-part uh, live stream, but it's an hour and a half long. So just make sure you build that extra half hour in if you're um, planning your day and um, we're starting with the basic shape and then we're going to continue um, on the second live stream to decorate the the whole toadstool house and for this you all you need is um, 
is our Enchanted Forest uh, wool mix. And then you need some basic, um, uh, you need some ideally lanolin rich core wool, works the fastest. And um, you only need about, I think I said for 30 to 40 grams. And then you need some red, which is about um, 20 grams maximum of the poppy red. Now the poppy red is out of stock at the moment, but it is coming in on Wednesday. The wool delivery is is now we've got a date is coming on Wednesday. So the, it will be back in stock, but you can also use the variegated red. And then the curly hedgehog is on October the 12th. You can get your curly hedgehog pack now, which um, uh, you can find on our website. And then uh, in in October 19th and 26th, we're getting on with our Mr. and Mrs. Tomta. I'm so looking forward to this one. I mean, I look forward to all of them, but um, I, I just it's it's an exciting project because it's got it's slightly it's got a slight different I don't know it's slightly different from what we normally do and it, they're really heavy because they've got these big pebbles up there who has so um yeah they're really fun I really love them and I think they look like a really happy um lovely little couple and they will catch anybody's eye in as a decoration in your house leading up to the festive season Remember, our Advent project is still um, available to purchase. Um, somebody said yesterday in the workshop, they said, um, so so have you got a picture? Have you shown anybody a picture yet? I said, no, no, they're not going to see a picture because it's a surprise. And um, they said, what? People bought these and they don't even know what they're making, <laughs> which suddenly occurred to me. Yeah, you have no idea what you're making. So I just want to th say a massive big thank you for your trust in us because I know it's going to be an amazing project for you, but we're not going to show you what it is. But you can just have to use your imagination and then hopefully be um, be surprised in the positive that's even better than what you imagine. But it's got it's Advent. Um, it's the Advent project, which is called Animals in the in the Wood, and it makes a large wall hanging. Um, where is the thing now here? Uh, uh, oh, um, I'm sure I've got um, I forgot one of these to show you. Uh, Advent project. That's it. Yes. Here we go. Animals in the wood. It's thirty pounds to pre-order now. If you are pre-ordering, please do not put anything else in that shopping basket. We we um we can't hold any of the goods back. You can just order the uh, animals in the wood. But and then if you order if you want to order something else, you you have to place a separate order, and um you might be lucky to get. Um, the odd advent calendar still. I'm not entirely sure. I haven't checked the stock recently. All I do know is that people, we are packing them. We are, um, you will see some photos, we share some, some on social media after next week. And, um, and it is a major, major undertaking. I mean, we've even thought of hiring extra rooms or anything like this. Logistically for us, it's an absolute nightmare. <laughs> But every year we say, let's do an advent calendar. And you say, where's your advent? We want to buy your advent calendar. So I think uh, we will continue doing this. Um, what else can I tell you? Um, we Oh, this is another little, I love this one so much. I designed that last year, actually, but it never got an, out, an airing or an outing. But it's it's the mini version of our of our wreath as a tree decoration and that's coming up as a as a um free tutorial on 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 our youtube um channel here as well i don't know if i've got a i want to say there is a date for it um i think it's the 9th of november and um of course the elves will appear as well the elves are currently not here and, and the one thing I, I did want to show you is october's maker's bo box project is the is the gorilla um, the mountain gorilla baby. Now I know it's hard to see because they're they're just so, so naughty. These mountain gorillas. Why do they have to be so black? But they 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 have posable arms and um, they can sort of like cling to you like this. And um, in the pack you get um, you you will make him a bamboo um, branch, and he's got that. Have a look at him. Oh. <laughs> He's he's really super cute, and he has got silk clay uh, feet and uh, um and uh, um what is it, what are they called hands, and um he's got a really sweet little face, and um as I say he's posable, so you he could be walking like this, you could have him um walking like a like a, a mountain gorilla does, or he could just be cuddling you like that, and holding on to you whichever way you want it. So um, I thought it, it he sells better by just 
by you just seeing him in in real he's totally posable he's got posable arms and legs um his body is posable his his head um is posable so everything's posable and he's very cuddly anyway that's um after the puppy of course which is currently our maker's box i haven't got him here either but i know you've seen most of most of him anyway so i think alicia we need a winner now whilst alicia is drawing a winner i'm going to read some more uh, fluffy felting funny um uh um spells okay so there was a question about the mini wreath i think alicia can you repeat that one um but i'm gonna read some of these um spells i call upon the creatures of the Fay, guide my needle to felt this perfectly. Oh, that's nice. I think you're on a roll, Vampire Venom. I think you and I have to have a word if ever we meet. Um, star light, star bright, may you get, grant my wish tonight. Let my fingers go, go, go and keep up with Steffi on tonight's Tiny Witch Show. Oh, that's so nice. We have got a winner and the winner is Karen H. So Karen, what you need to do, this is of, of course... Oops, on Tuesday, um, the 21st of September at 1 p.m. on on YouTube live. Please send us an email to info at the makers to ss.co.uk. And for the Thursday winner in anticipation, you have to do the same, whoever you are. Well done. Congratulations. And um, um, I still haven't got that. Um, so Karen H, that's the winner for um, Tuesday. I still haven't got that thing, the question about the wreath, um, the mini wreath. Uh, so what else have we got here? In, I'm looking for a good for some for some spells, but there's so much chatter going on. Um, we are witches. See us fly on Halloween night, way up in the sky. Nice. Um, are you related, uh, Bridget Anderson and Susan Anderson? Are you both in Australia? I'm sure Anderson isn't isn't such a rare name name, but who knows? This is a small world. Oh, witches ride their brooms by night through the starry night so bright, off to cast their spell when meeting fairies in the dell. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, I love all your, your spells. You're so talented. Oh, I don't think I read that one. Did I read that one? Hocus Pocus, needle focused, wool at the ready, nice and steady, gently stub upon your mat, ensuring things don't go flat. Stab away every day and your troubles will go away. <laughs> oh, I like it. That's brilliant, Diane. Um, I have to find Karen's spell now. But there's, I mean, it's a massive chat going on here. You're really on your, on your, um, 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 I can't even think of the word now. You're really on your chatting broom. <laughs> oh, dear. Um Anyway, I hope that um, we will we will give you um, the what you need for to make this. It's going to be a stash buster, basically. But I will just tell you, it's going to be a pipe cleaner and very very little bits of wool, mainly blue and white, and some green and red and brown. That's it. So it's going to definitely going to be a, sta a stash buster. And if you've got a nice ribbon, then that that would be great because we start the ribbon goes on there pretty much at the beginning. And I don't think I've got anything else to say now. Um, I won't even mention pumpkins. No, nobody ever mentioned pumpkins to me again um, until next year. And um, oh, the witch is falling off her perch here. And I think that's all I've got to say. So stay safe, everybody. Um, remember, there are other things out there than um, than than the um, the C word, and that's not Christmas. And so um, it's this time of the year where we're all probably going to get a cold and. Um, We've just got to ride it out like our witch on the broom. And so take care and I will see you next week. Stay safe and lots of love to you all. Bye.